civil righteousness. Yeah, I would love, I mean, Jimmy, honestly, be good too. we'll go for both. <laughs> honestly, what you just now said, what you just said is, is where we are, just so you guys know, you know, we, we ran in three days ago, four days ago, I can't even remember now, Thursday, Saturday night, we, we, we responded to the call, uh, you know, uh, the Lord initiated this Isaiah 58 fast. Andy and Sean were, uh, were a part of uh, some of the, one of the first, I think I reached out to you guys, Jimmy. Brandon was on. Yeah. And we had um, an amazing response then. But now, I mean, we just, by the thousands and the tens of thousands around the world, people are engaging this Isaiah 58 fast, which, Wow. I'm starting to believe I'm starting to believe that it's not even so much a modification of diet or a restricted movement in your in your diet as much as it is the 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 reformation of the movement in your deeds. I mean yeah. we know that we know that we're not saved by works but when I look at Isaiah 58 and it's talking about feed the poor, spin right. yourselves on behalf, clothe the naked, you know, it's all these works of justice that it then says, and then the, the, the big piece is the internal restraint from slander and pointing the finger and speaking wickedness to break that yoke. And that deals with the heavy burden. And for me, I was so heavy after watching this shooting of George, George Floyd. I've never known, I mean, I have known that kind of anger and heaviness. And I said, Lord, how do I deal with this? Help me in my soul. And he said, Isaiah 58. And so we called this Isaiah 58 fast. And now the Lord, you know, there's kind of different levels. There's different levels of engagement. There's like kind of special forces where we get called in by the police to come and tamp down violence. And we did that Saturday night. Uh, let's just say between Saturday and Tuesday, uh, I, I, I had my life threatened three times. And it wasn't just threats. It was actual in the moment and the Lord intervened. Um, it is like frontline war on the streets of some cities in America, many cities. But we have witnessed over and over and over and over again the reality that peacekeepers are the police, but peacemaking is, is reserved for the body of Christ. And so we have seen this supernatural manifestation over and over of the miracle of peace being made on our streets. So this isn't even supposed to be the formal uh, recording or anything. I don't know, but just, oh, you great. know, for, for what. Capture. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. I'm on daily calls with our guys in DC. You know, the, we've got a little church plant there and they're right in the middle of everything. Same, same deal every day. And there's, there is, there is, you, which, which I, I tell them all just to buy follow you <laughs> because because of your live stuff that you're doing in the streets that's what they're doing but you know of course we're talking back and forth but uh the um the decision making that you have to make right when it gets crazy what direction do you go do you pull back in prayer do you uh, how far in do you go with everybody do you stand between somebody and something else and you know well wow it's it's a uh, we're, we're, we're wrestling it through at a pretty deep level. I'm doing it a bit vicariously because Waco is not in a place of unrest at this point and we're not. Well, not on that, but. well, I think what the Lord has done is giving us a tipping point strategy, meaning that's based in critical mass. And this is where having guys like you, both of you, this between the send and between Antioch, the ability to mobilize masses. When we're on these streets, what I'm finding is in most cities, even if there's a crowd of 10,000 on the ground, which rarely there is, I mean, in big cities like New York and Chicago and LA, you'll get, you'll get those kind of sites, you'll get 20 and 30,000 people. But even that, if you look at the population, is a very, very small population. And so what happens is, on a minor scale, Ferguson small, St. Louis is, is large, but you know, if there's a crowd of a thousand on the street, out of the 
thousand, at least nine hundred, don't believe in violence. They're not out there to right. get violent. Exactly. Yeah. They're just angry, and half of them are teenagers or you know millennials and or Gen Zers, and they just want to get cool footage and be a part of something because it feels like you're inside of a movie. You know. Now, out of that though, there's a small percentage out of maybe the 100 who really do believe and they feel like it's time for war, out of that, maybe 20% of them are actually trained like anarchists and, and ready to overthrow stuff. Yeah. But that small little group has the power to, to, to set the atmosphere of the entire gathering and to shift the city. So what happens is the police now are in a completely defensive posture and they tell all law abiding citizens to get off the streets and go home and stay home. And essentially what you've simply done is reserve the streets right. for whatever people want to do. And I'm going, wait a second, this is backwards because this ideology, the people who are getting the media coverage are the people who have the ideology that the only solution is a violent revolution. Right. And if we simply showed up in mass, even 10% of a city who does not believe that that ideology is treated, there is still a way forward and a way to produce justice through the weapon of love rather than the undercurrent of rage. Yeah. That, would, that would be masses. I mean, you would see I mean, 10% of even Ferguson, which only has a population of 25,000, is 2,500. And that's more than any amount of people that's already been on the streets. So I'm going, we would get the media coverage. We can set the atmosphere. And God has been able to save by few or many. And we see that oftentimes he chooses the few. But we're hearing testimonies of great glory in the streets of America as Christians are going and releasing the sight and the sound. And so for, for, from the send to Antioch, my, my ask or my, my heart would be, you know, can we help you help get people motivated and deployed into the streets right now for this gospel moment? As you said about wow. this, this is a gospel moment like never before. I believe that God has put and shown us where the harvest is ripe. And it's the, it's the people who are hurting, who are angry. And we're finding people who are getting healed, literally delivered in a moment. Angry young black and minority people, when they see white folks that are out there going, we're here weeping. Well, we're sorry, man. And they're like, what? And then they pray and sh something shifts. So I think it's a real moment. Um, Wow. I guess. Wow. Yeah. Andy. What can we do? No, what can we do, JT? Uh, uh, do we have, you know, do you have something we can, we could share, something we can post? Should we keep directing people towards the Isaiah 58, um, you know, the 21 days? What's the best way to, to action this? The, the best way would get, would be for people to get connected to the, the free action guide that we have, which is really a, a daily devotional. Right. Um, I am doing a morning devotional every, every morning. Right now, it's predominantly airing on Facebook Live and on YouTube, but we're going to start uploading those things to Instagram. We're going to even be inviting other uh, voices because it's not just me and my wisdom, but there are many seasoned folks, but we want to get people engaged in that way. Then we're empowering and finding field directors to do the wall strategy, which is a silent prayer meeting, but it looks publicly like a protest. It's a silent prayer meeting where we're expressing our heart to the Lord. Then we have a hope rally. That's the third action is we're, we're encouraging communities to almost even do, you could even call it a memorial service uh, for George Floyd. But what we're saying is, you know, the, we have to create a context for people to feel heard. And so Dr. said, riot is the language of the unheard. Well, if that's true and riot has hit our cities and our streets, then we have to say, we hear you. And we have to create a forum that's covered by the blood of Jesus, but a peaceful environment that we bring when we show up and we create a forum for people in the streets to be heard. And what happens is, in our hope rallies, we begin to turn over. We begin to turn over these 
uh, the megaphone and just say, uh, share what's on your heart. And people might get on there and curse and do this stuff, but the crowd just responds, we hear you. And then the next person, a white person, I don't get black people. I don't understand. I've been a racist. And we've seen a healing bomb just begin to flow. We had basically uh, a healing meeting on the streets of Ferguson two days ago. And we knew we saw something break in the heavens. If anybody can do this, any community, any missionary community, take your worship right into the center of your city. And honestly, if you have relationships with police, you can try to set it up in advance, but in wartime, so to speak, in a city where there's a lot of chaos, nobody has capacity to give you a permit anyway. So you just go and do it <laughs> and see what happens. So yeah, the we're, we're planning to release a, a participant guide that's real simple and clear so people can do devotion, the, the wall, the hope rally, and they can share that with others. Yeah. Um, can you send us even after this call, JT? I think you probably did. I don't, I can't think which text thread. We're all in so many text threads. This stuff gets buried. Can you send us like a, um, a post, you know, whether it's a, I don't know whether you did a video or a, if it's just a, a photo with some links so that we can share some of this stuff. We'll get you, we'll get you everything you, you can okay, want. Okay, thank you. Me. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, you probably already did. I'm just thinking it probably got buried in the craziness yeah. of the amount of communication that's happening right now. But we really, man, JT, just so trust your leadership. And um, I, I, there's not too many people I know that, that are responding the way you are and leading the way you're leading. And you're so trusted by, you know, this, this broader family. So we, we really want to direct people into your leadership because uh, I know people, I know for myself, it's just like, I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm like, same as Jimmy. I'm like, follow JT. <laughs> That's what we should do. <laughs> so, and, and I'm in sleepy Hawaii, you know, where we had, six people with signs on the side of the road the other day. You know what I mean? It's like that. So it's that my context is, is, is strange in all of this. And I want to direct people towards what you're doing. I think it's remarkable. Well, I, I know we're recording and we'll just kind of edit stuff in and out. But since I have you guys here, I think it's, it's critical for you to understand just as brothers that, I mean, this is beyond just angry black people. I mean, this is embedded within this, there are folks who have been rat who have who are capitalizing and they have been capitalizing for many years on the pain of the African American experience to radicalize and raise up domestic uh, uh, insurgents and and they yeah. believe this is their time to act, but the response of the righteous has actually been pushing it back, and uh, so this is why it's critical that. We're, that we are awake and saying, okay, lest America and lest our new normal become militia groups who blow up places, you know, and, and lest what we're used to in Africa and the Middle East, if we want that to be America's new normal, uh, we're in that critical window right now where it becomes normal for militia groups and all these different things just to do what they do openly. Um, or we can still, we can just, create the the new uh the new movement rooted in a biblical hope that's multi-ethnic and multicultural so amen amen that's yeah. it um, wow but i appreciate that's i'm really so good. humbled i'm so humbled by everything you share pastor jimmy and uh love you andy and it's just an honor to run with you guys it's well, mutual so yeah. grateful yeah and i and i'm you know i'm with andy i think that the, what we've already passed on to our guys is just to follow you through social media. And that kind of leads to the applications, mm -hmm. you know, cause every city's a bit different and what their current coalition is, uh, mm -hmm. how they apply that. Uh, like, that's what I said. The DC is most applicable. I mean, that's a, like a go-to, Hey, JT's everything he's saying, we'll just, you know, kind of, take the workbook and, and let's go. Yeah. And, um, and then I think, but by following your heart and your leadership, I think people can pick up what they need in their context, sure. whether it's intercession, whether it's uh, a protest, a prayer protest, or the ability to do an open air uh, deal as well. But I, what I,
life, love is your voice in your heart and people to get attached to you, you know, because I, what I've told our guys over and over again, Hey, who are the, who are the voices, right? Who are the MLK voices that we feel like carry gospel centered, you know, uh, the, the, literally civil righteousness appropriately. And, and, you know, different people carry different things, but, um, I just uh, am so grateful that I can point people to you and they can take the journey with you. And I don't have to be concerned about anything other than amen. Uh, and let's keep learning together and, and, uh, and sharing as a community. So thanks for letting us into your life. Really. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Love you guys. <laughs>